Hey boys and girls, I'm here with Jordan and we're going to talk a little bit about the migration that's happened uh, in casting technology here at, um, here at Tesla. Um, so what we're looking at is our very first shot at what a casting could look like. And this is um, from 2018. 18. Well, no, the, yeah, so this one on the left here is 2018 and then this came in 2020. Yeah, so this one is the original one which I've beaten up and talked a little bit about. There was 120 parts, this one has one. So it, it, it made, a, it made a, um, a big statement to go from conventional, actually poorly designed conventional uh, construction uh, to um, revolutionary because no one had ever made anything like this before. Yeah, absolutely. And done it in two years. Done it in two years. And I would say the thing to me is not just that they did a casting, but a couple of things to me are that they did such a large casting and they incorporated some elements in this that other OEMs who have done castings to a lesser scale have still not really gone the full nine yards with. And so those things to me are the impact script, right? Looking at how far rearward or forward Tesla's willing to take a casting to have something a bit less ductile and still go for far forward and rearward. And then also to me, it's the ceiling nature of it, right? So if you look at, mm -hmm. Um, the underside of, the, of a Tesla, a Model Y, for example, with the, you know, uh, pack to body style that they have, they're willing to seal off of castings. They're willing to seal um, other stamped body structures with polyurethane seals. They're sealing out to other body elements. All throughout these castings, they're, they're quite, quite aggressive as far as their willingness to seal and also get within those crumple zones versus some of the yeah. other OEMs. Well, the other thing for me is that um, there's so many things that they do to route. So routing uh, cables and, um, and in some cases pipes is always a problem for the guys on the line. They're, they're hard to get at. They usually don't really have a plan. It's kind of like somewhere there, there's a hole. Uh, somehow you got to get either a push pin or you've got to get a uh, scribbit or you got to get a, 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 a screw in, into that hole and it's left up to the operators. I really don't like that. I like the idea of weaving these wires into place and that's what Tesla has done as well. So that, that increases your efficiency on the assembly line and it makes it more accurate for the guys on the line. Uh, it, doesn't take, uh, it doesn't take long to figure out, hey, if I weave this in, it's all done, it'll never fall out. It's a, it's a good idea. Yeah. So for me, um, I'm, uh, I'm pretty, pretty excited about what I saw in the first castings as opposed to that. And so for me, this moving ahead, if you like, in, uh, in industry is, is the right thing to do. Yeah. yeah, so in just two short calendar years, they went from a rear casting only with it bifurcated down the center, like the yeah. one we saw over there. So it was really only half the car divided down the center line in the rear only. And then in two calendar years, we saw this, right? So this is the front giga casting on the 2022 Model Y made in the Gigafactory in Texas. And in the previous iteration of the Model Y, it was all sheet metal, very similar to what we're seeing here on the Model yeah. 3. So, you know, as, as Sandy was saying, looking at the previous casting, seeing OEMs, namely Tesla, go this far with respect to aggressiveness and going to castings and like integrating to the extent that they have is amazing. Oh, in such a short period of time as well. Right. Normally it would take you years just to get people in the same room to talk about something as dramatic as this. Right. And I, and I I've, you know, I work with pretty much every major um, OEM on the planet. Right. And to move from that to this, just staggeringly, uh, uh, well, it's important, but it's staggeringly unbelievable that somebody, right. somebody could actually talk people into it. Well, not just talk people into it, but talk people into it when they had a fully right. vetted, right? They've, they've gone through all their durability yeah. testing, so on and so forth, a version of the Model Y, which is still present today, to then go from that a sheet metal version to this on the same vehicle within two calendar years is just flat out unheard of. Yeah, so at, at the end of the day, moving from here to there was a big deal. And the rear casting is just back there as well. But 
But then they've gone to the cyber truck and, and now we're looking at an amazing amount of difference. Yeah, so fast forward a couple of years, Sandy, yeah. the long awaited cyber truck. We went from, we're kind of walking the, the crowd here through the casting evolution. So they went from half of a rear and a Tesla Model Y in 2020. In 2022, they got rid of the floor of the body and white of the Tesla Model Y, and they went to full giga castings front and rear on the Model Y. And then in a similar approach, they took the Cybertruck and they did almost the same thing that they did with the Model Y, but I would say in a grander scale, right? The castings are both larger, heavier, more expansive. They're, they're connecting more surfaces and more monuments within the body and white. And we're, we're seeing small, but also measurable improvements versus what we saw on the Model Y, right? On the Model Y, we saw some defects, some telltale signs that they're still right getting their toes dipped in the pool of castings to some extent, although they've gone full tilt. But on, on this version of the, the Cybertruck, we're seeing some more refinements, namely, you know, in the, in the back edges, right, where they're connecting some of these key structural points to the battery pack. We're seeing more ribbing, a lip turned up, right, some more gusseting and in, in structural ribs. And a lot of those are managing some of the areas that I would call minor defects in the Model Y that we saw previously, right? So it, it's doing a different job to some extent, right? It's a bigger battery pack, it's a bigger vehicle. And so you'll get some of this structure innately but I would say the level of refinement that we're seeing at the casting edges and so forth, to me, seems an improvement over the Model Y. Well, the other thing that I liked about it was they invented their own CFD system. So um, if we look here, you can see down below the, um, these arcs that, uh, that normally you'd expect to see straight lines. Well, with their, um, uh, with their CAD system, They've developed their own system for castings, and what they've done is <clears throat> basically made a, uh, a, marvelous, uh, a marvelous new way of uh, pushing the molten aluminum into the die. And, um, and by doing that, they've actually reduced the tonnage. So this was, uh, I would have expected to be a 9,000 or 8,000 ton press but apparently they did it in a 6,000 ton press. I haven't seen that, but, um, but that's what I was told by the folks at Tesla. Uh, that's an amazing feat. And if I can take, <clears throat> if it takes less energy to shoot the, uh, the aluminum in there, then I'm all in all day long. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the, all the geometry, Sandy, that you're referencing, you know, you see it certainly on the outside. It almost looks like, you know, gills of a prehistoric creature or something, right? Yeah. It's kind of, I, I love staring at it. It's very cool to see all these different features. And, and we always say that like some of the best designs look like they're formed in water. Yeah. And that's kind of what you get here, right? As Sandy mentioned, it's not a bunch of straight lines and right angles joining with one another. It's, it's a lot of like very organic structures you know, seemingly really tailored to manage the load where it's coming from, where it's going to, a, a proper load path versus just saying, we're gonna put a bunch of grids in place. Um, and with the casting, naturally, you can do that quite a bit easier. So it's very cool to see. You know, down to, we're looking at the front end structure, right? So these are the primary load rails where in a front end impact, this casting is taking a brunt, you know, a, quite, quite a bit of the brunt of the impact loading. So. What you're seeing in these wave features is a mechanism for them structurally to manage that that impact pulse you know so they're really getting creative as far as not just what they can do within a cast aluminum part but also how to really maximize its ability to manage that impulse that pulse load yeah <clears throat> so from a functional standpoint it's all good stuff um but let's let's talk about um how much floor space um, suddenly becomes available. So I did a study, um, fairly detailed study, to find out how much of a difference there'd be between um, a standard, um, um, a standard uh, uh, sheet metal body versus one that had castings in it. <clears throat> now I didn't have the advantage of seeing this at the time, but I'm certain that this would have even more of an impact uh, than, than what, I, what I calculated before. 
But I, what I did before was, uh, if it was looking at anything to do with the lower end of the body, what we call a platform, <clears throat> or what some people call a rolling chassis or skateboard, whatever, if I look at that, 40% of the floor space I need with stamping dies and stuff like that is disappeared in favor of these types of castings. Now, I don't uh, see an end to castings. I see this as being something that's going to be uh, um, energized, actually, because of this. Everybody on the planet now is talking to us about what do we do with castings? How, how can we make these things work better for us and whatnot? And I can, I can tell you for sure that the original castings that we analyzed here from, um, uh, from Tesla, um, I pretty much thought that they were pretty much overdone. Um, these ones here um, are about what I think is uh, correct, at least for the driving of the vehicle and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big towing guy and I don't care about a lot of other things, but from, uh, from the standpoint of where are we going to, not what have we done in the past, these things are, uh, these things are brilliant. It's just really interesting to see the decisions they've made all around the body. You know, the castings obviously take up a big portion, you know, but obviously the occupant home, which is kind of what I'm standing in here, right, being a, a lot of ultra high strength steels on the outside to protect the occupant home. Um, it's actually somewhat conventional, right? There's nothing uh, majorly shocking about what we're seeing on the interior here as far as the lay layering or construction. You'd see interfaces very similar to this in a conventional unibody. But th to me, the thing that really sets it all off is that they're connecting all of this relatively conventional architecture right here. You can see all the, the ceiling or the structural adhesive witness marks and then the ceiling to the casting. They're, ca they're attaching it all to the castings. And by doing so, what they're actually doing on the bottom is they're locking the whole thing, the whole body structure, they're locking it in the Y direction, cross car. Conventional body in white, you've got slip in the, you know, in the headers and actually they're, they're slipping the top of the greenhouse, right? Which means that from a GD&T, geometric dimensioning and tolerance perspective, they can move this ever so slightly to get this thing so that it's dead nuts. With the castings, they're saying the castings are that datum. We're just yeah. bolting it perfectly in Y, and that way every vehicle coming off the line, we know that that is a set point, and the castings actually sort of become a fixture. They are the fixture. Yeah. Rather than a part of the car, right? The, the fixture rather than the part. Yeah, well, yeah. it's both, the fixture and the part. Right. And when you start fooling around with stain, uh, sheet metal, um, uh, I spent a lot of my life uh, doing this kind of stuff, <clears throat> That's where I started out as a tool maker. And quite frankly, um, making steel perform exactly the same way every time is really, really difficult. Right. And then you've also got the added issues associated with, um, <laughs> uh, with uh, purchasing agents who just found a giant savings of a penny, a pound, and they bring it in and you start uncoiling that, uh, that, that product and it goes through the straighteners and you're looking and it ain't straight and then it starts going into the dies and the next thing you know, you're having to tune the dies again because somebody saved a penny on a piece of steel. And uh, believe me, putting these bodies together conventionally is no easy trick. There are fixtures everywhere. Some of them clamp, some of them are for welding, but at the end of the day, it's all a tremendous amount of extra cost from an investment standpoint, labor, um, basically hauling this stuff around, and then of course the uh, the quality issues that are associated with. We have slip joints here, but these are simple. When you start looking at that kind of a product, where you've got arcs and uh, and uh, style lines coming together, things go uh, pretty hairy pretty fast. Well, and you know, Sandy, something that you often point out when looking at vehicles, you've got an eye for it, right? Looking at gap, flushness, you know, all, the, yeah. all, all those different things on the exterior of a vehicle, those are all telltale signs of how well their processes are controlled, right. how well their body fixturing is managed and, and all, the, yeah. all the rest, right? So, 
Yeah, I mean, this, it really, really is key, not just to the aesthetics of gap and flush, but also things like wind noise and NVH, right, as you're driving down the road. Yeah. Those are things that you'll, that the customer will actually start to perceive. Right, right? And, and quite frankly, um, it's a really difficult job, and that's why I look at it. I wanna find out how good somebody is at, at building a car. Well, here's the deal. Um, these cars come out pretty darn good now. I mean, mm -hmm. Tesla used to be terrible and not now. Not because of they've, they've come up with new, uh, new ways of joining sheet metal, but because it's easier to build a vehicle if you have a fixture that's perfect every time. And that's what a casting is going to do for you. Yeah. You get a perfect fixture every time. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, Sandy, but I'm really interested and curious, you know, now that we've seen the Cybertruck come out and we've seen the speed and the evolution in which they're willing to change right on the Model Y as, as the kind of shining example of that. I'm curious to see in the next, uh, next few iterations of the Cybertruck, any other vehicles that Tesla's going to produce, just kind of what's next for them, but I'm, I'm excited. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed. And uh, for you folks at home, keep watching Monroe Live. And uh, Jordan and I will be happy to tell you about whatever we find next.